find very interesting in your, your face technology, face matching technology like that. Could you tell me how you know it works? So uh, we are actually working with the National University of Singapore. And so one aspect to match is we feel facial is important. Uh, how it really works is we match people that look alike with each other. Uh, that not only takes into consideration how well you look. I mean, generally, we feel that good-looking guys want to go for good-looking girls. So, um, and so we think that building on such a technology would help to automate and scale uh, this process. And uh, you know, also, I'd like to ask about your global expansion plan and uh, your, your application seems to be a bit rough by uh, you know, various countries in the Asia region. Uh, but do you have any plan to come to Japan? I mean, in Japan, uh, maybe so the marriage making services are you know, more popular than you know, dating so you services. Know, you know, dating services are not so popular. Than, uh, you know, do you have any you know, idea about the Japan's market? I think what we're trying to do now in our early phase is really to test our product and really in the four cities that we have mentioned, um, we are in Singapore, Manila, Jakarta and KL. So uh, we are really testing a certain key matrix and uh, we like what we see so far and really the next move would then be to go to uh, other affluent cities such as Hong Kong, um, Taiwan, Korea, Japan. But um, that's for, I mean, we are still in uh, discussion for that. Uh, hey guys, uh, I, I, today probably the feedback that I'm going to give right now is going to be the same thing that we did with the speed dating stuff. Um, so for me, when I look at the dating ecosystem and application, um, I, I mentioned this before, but you have to think about the down cycle and up cycle of the actual users, right? What happens when they break up? Um, this is actually one of the biggest problems that the dating apps uh, ecosystem is actually occurring. That when they break up, where, where do those users go? Uh, when they actually go to get more serious and they get married, where do the users go? Because the dating app dynamic is very, very different once you actually leave those stages, right? Uh, and, and hence, uh, you really need to think about how you want to place those users and like what kind of partnerships you actually want to make that is number one equitable for you guys, but also very uh, increase a lot of utility and happiness for the users in the future. Um, I would change the new thing. The noon thing is, is, has been done, yeah? And it's already been published by some, some guy in, in Thailand. So I just changed the timing. It doesn't really matter if it's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. I'd be actually happy if it was 2 o'clock because that's after when I'm really, really like full and like I have my, my um, I, I ate too much so I'm really sleepy. So if I find a girl that I like, it'll wake me up. So that'd be better. Um, in terms of your, your overall four core technology portions, it's really important that you own it really, really quickly. So your, your facial recognition technology, your machine learning, um, your overall, um, in terms of how you actually build up the UX so that the data they input is, is the least pain and inducing will be very, very important. Um, another portion is about ARPU, right? You said ARPU was 7.5. If you, you can't put that ARPU on Southeast Asia right now, even if it's 2016, yeah. right? Um, what you could do is say that this is sensible for like Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, perhaps, and even Japan and Australia, but if you want to put that Southeast Asia article on there, you got to bring it way, way down. Um, and, 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 and I think that's a little bit different. Um, also, you have to also, I think you have to consider long term what the cultural fit will be for your app. So right now, I think we're taking a one-size-fits-all to the dating app. Maybe a little loose How do you interact with the app when you're in Singapore? It's very different. How do you interact with it when you're in uh, Indonesia, for example? No problem. So maybe there's some interactions that do not work well with one So those are the things. Yes. Uh, one simple question: uh, Do you have a secret sauce to you know to make pretty hot girls use this product? Because I think that's the biggest success <laughs> factor. I'm not joking. Um, you know, it's not about the algorithm. It's just you know bringing in hot girls, because usually a lot of dating uh, websites, you have tons of males, you don't have pretty girls. And it just has to be a bit better at tech conferences. <laughs> sure, sure. So, um, I, I think essentially the, the problem that we are really 
difference of the unbalanced ratio. So almost all of my data sites, there's tons of men. The problem with, with, with all these sites is that the women, there are way too many messages. If you ask any women, which women wants to have their profile seen by thousands of men? So this is one of the reasons why we think that we're private. Once a day, it's something that women will actually love. And so, um, and it's really shown by the survey that we've done. For the 60 cents out there, I really say that they'll be very disappointed if we close down. On top of that, how do we get hot women? I, I, I think one thing <laughs> is to get hot guys. You know, hot, hot guys, hot women will be attracted to hot guys. So I, I think in general, um, yeah. Cool. Um, I love this model and I love to see how it adapts to different countries in Southeast Asia. Um, I love it so much to like invest it in Noon Soon, right? So just a disclaimer. So, um, so my questions are, the first one, you mentioned that you were in four different countries, right? You know, Manila and all of that. So you mentioned also you had 5,000 users. So how many users are in Singapore and how many users are in the rest of the market? In Singapore right now, it would be about half of that. And in um, Manila, we have about a thousand two, and the rest are um, Jakarta and KL. So actually, it's in this order: Singapore, Manila, Jakarta. KL. Okay, got it. So the typically for models, when you import a model and adapt it to a region, right? And this applies to any kind of uh, business model that maybe some some of you in the crowd are sort of bringing in. Is that what you see? Is that um, pitching the idea is the easy part because it's proven somewhere else. Right? The tricky one is getting the growth recipe correct. So, for example, when you go into Manila, the first 1,000 users, how did you do that? How do you spend money to get the next 10,000 users, so on and so forth? So, right now, with your experience in growing Manila, the first 1,000 users in Manila, not your home base, how did you get the first 1,000? Um, to be honest, for our first 1,000 users in Manila, it was purely through Facebook ads. And um, we realized that this is not going to be a long-term solution. Uh, we really need to bring the acquisition cost much uh, lower. So um, we are working on a lot of different features that will actually play out on our marketing. For example, we could do groups. So really go in and say that let's, let's um, segment the groups. Um, for example, university students, working class, and really let them create groups within our app. Uh, and some other features like you could do uh, matchmaking, a friend, getting two friends to come to join our app, but that idea, you could even do double dating, me and John, we could get two matches a day, and we could do a group chat. Uh, and of course, based on the point system, all this, um, uh, you got to kick in with your virality also. Yeah. So, uh, so you're building more features for virality, that's cool. Um, so, kind of like a classic word of advice, I think probably how the rocket way of doing it is they'll just uh, use ad spend and get smarter as they spend and learn more on ad spend. Sure. So, um, and you're also going to spend resources on innovating product features to create priority as well. So I think your skill as an entrepreneur is to manage them both, because if you're raising 500 grand, you're like, okay, how much are we going to spend on learning and driving down our CPA versus building new features and driving up virality. So I wish you guys all the best. It's a very exciting market to be in right now. Thank you. One, one last question, one sure. last comment. Um, if you, in terms of user acquisition, I would suggest that you try to target for the male side the younger demographic, but the women's side, the older demographic, if you want to make this a little bit more viral. Um, it's just because the dating dynamic that you want is much more aggressive, and much more dynamic as a dating app application. So I think the older demographic of the women, I'm not saying like, like geriatric, but I'm saying like 30, like 30 to 35 year olds, matching them up with 20 to 25 year olds, just because I think the dating dynamic will work better. Cool, thanks. Thank you, Lola. Thank you, John. Excellent. One, one word of advice for somebody who's a little bit older is that you might want to read the lyrics to the Kinks song, Lola. Kind of underlying message there, maybe dating. Anyway, it's kind of an inside, that's probably even more an inside joke than the Game of Thrones thing. So. But Google the lyrics to Lola on, on the, by, by the Kinks. It's, you guys can have a laugh to yourself. So, coming up next, uh, here from uh, Indonesia, the company is called Project Shu, and Anissa Putri is going to be presenting. Take it away, Anissa, thank you.
representing Georgie Chu. So, when we're trying to find the right pair of shoes, it's like finding the right one to accompany your journey. You have to be sure everything is in one package. It doesn't always have to be about the look. It is also about the comfort. Talking about the comfort, it's beyond the quality itself. It has to be something that fulfills your needs. When I decided to start this business, because I often imagine my perfect pair of shoes, you don't always get what you want, but what happens if you could have what you exactly want? Have you ever fit it into your own room? Please, allow me to introduce you to Project Shoe. Project Shoe is a fashion e-commerce business that let customers design and purchase their self designed shoes. Well, the process is very easy. With a few clicks, the customers can have their dream shoes. So, to all the judges, demonstration. So this is how the home page looks like. You can start by choosing design your own shoes button. And there will appear 12 base models. You have to choose one of the base models. So let's say I choose the heel of one. You can also change the toe. So I choose the big toe. Project U has 170 choices of material. We got uh, Italian pony hair. We got uh, real leather, and we got Nika, and many others. So I'm going to make uh, AG colorful shoes. So I choose yellow neon for front part, and I choose neon thin color for body part. Now I'm left with colors and materials. So you can also choose the different types of yours. We got spice heels, we got Nika heels, and others. So you can change the height of heels. Well, I love high heels very much, so I choose the 15 centimeter. So this is the best part. So this is the best part. You can put many selection of accessories. We got 20 additional selection of accessory. Project U has millions possibility of designs. Well, after you finish the design and the payment, you just have to wait from two until four weeks at your doorstep with free worldwide shipping. The price product range starts from 200 until 40, 450 US dollar. So for operations, Indonesia may not be the cheapest region to produce, but it is one of the best. As well as you know, many brands like HMM, Zara also made their production in Indonesia. And we have experience uh, from our shoemakers, 30 years. The management and production, everything else is under one seat. Talking about the shoes market, the global shoes market is always a learning, which is just a big opportunity. We are going to penetrate into these eight countries. The total market worth of shoe e-commerce from these eight countries is around 9 billion US dollars which they have more uh, willingness to pay more. So this is our business model. We produce shoes based on the transactions and we are just in time production. We only produce shoes by the order and we can make a lower inventory budget. That's why we can have high margin products. Project Shoe is a, a delivers a less commercial promotion but most estimate market approach. That's why our promotion will try to win the hearts of the customers. In order to ensure the success of the business, projects should involve some of the most valuable professionals. As well as myself, I'm Andy Hany Samuti, the CEO of Project Shoe. I have experience in advertising industry, such as Sachil and Hart Bodo. And we have Ariel and Ariel Tejo as the CFO uh, in the corner. And uh, he's the managing partner of Brumara. And we have Fami Aztekat as fashion director. She has experience for shoe business more than six years. And we have Fajar Budi Prasetyo as the IT advisor. Uh, Hannes Lady, uh, the IT advisor, has sold his company to Yahoo Bank in 2008. And now he runs his software company. It's called Now. Our total seed investment needed is 496,000 US dollars. Why you should invest in Project Shoe? Because we have global market compatibility, we have high margin products, and we have low cost 
production and operations. And we have, sure, we have great co-founders. Project U is seeking to deliver what the market wants. Therefore, you will be investing in the product that market will contribute.